Hello everyone and welcome to our next video. Today we're going to talk about combinatorial control of gene expression and how it is that essentially different cells throughout your entire body can possess the exact same genes, the same genetic information, yet functionally and phenotypically be so different and how certain combinations of proteins are responsible for that. So the first thing to point out is that every cell contains the entire genome. Some people have the notion that an immune cell and a neuron actually contain different genes and that's what makes them different, but that's not the case. They have the exact same genes, but the two cells have different genes turned on and expressed, and this is what gives them different functionality. So different cells expressing different genes gives their identity, and that differential gene expression is controlled by transcription factors. Now, there are not as many transcription factors as there are genes that need to be controlled. So what this means is that different combinations of factors, which can act to activate or repress genes, will be responsible for the vast diversity in gene expression that we find. So let's look at how these transcription factors actually function to control expression. So as I mentioned, they can either activate or repress, and you need combinations to allow for different levels of expression. So let's take this hypothetical cell one. There are two activators here, so be uh, likely at the upstream regulatory region of the gene. And this allows for very high levels of transcription, very strong expression. In our hypothetical cell 2, however, there's a repressor present. And what this will do is block transcription of this gene, so there will be no expression. This, of course, gives a very different uh, phenotype than cell 1 and demonstrates how even though both cells have the gene only one of them expresses it. Theoretically there could be a cell 3 that only has activator 1 and no activator 2, no repressor and in this cell you get low levels of transcription and low levels of expression and this could theoretically give a third phenotype. Now let's look at an actual example of this. So the ABC model is an explanation of how a few transcription factors are responsible for the different structures of a flower. Um, we do have a separate video on this model and I'll put the link in the description below and that'll be a little more in-depth. But essentially the a, B, and C are three different transcription factors, and they are responsible for regulating uh, downstream expression of the genes required for the different flower structures. So these genes encode transcription factors, and those transcription factors then, in combination, change what structure develops in what place. So if you have the C transcription factor on its own, you get carpels. Um, if you have B and C together, you get stamens. If you have B and A together, you get petals. And if you have A on its own, you get sepals. So these three transcription factors are responsible for determination of what flowering structures you get. Uh, keep in mind this is somewhat simplified. The model uh, is a little more extensive than this, but it gets the point across that a small number of factors can be responsible for a huge variety in phenotype and gene expression. So the major takeaway from this is that every cell contains your entire genome. Uh, genetically, in terms of what genes are present, they're all identical, so it's not accounting for potential mutations that you accumulate, but uh, in theory, they all have the same genes. 
The difference is what genes are expressed or turned on. This expression is what gives each cell its unique identity, and this is controlled by a relatively small number of factors, and these factors act in combination to allow for control of a much larger number of genes. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments.